Okay, hello and welcome to Scientifically Speaking. Today I'm going to be explaining, because I've already explained how this works, this is the main mechanism for how double, hel double helix energy flow works. Uh, this is from phys.org, uh, it's called Tangled Magnetic Fields Power Cosmic Particle Accelerators. Now what they're saying is the SLA C researchers have found a new mechanism that could explain how plasma jets emerging from the center of acti active galaxies like the one shown in this illustration accelerate particles to extreme energies. Basically they're saying that energy is shooting out and this ring is doing something and so they've shown an electric field, current density and magnetic field. I'm going to read it all, uh, or some of it anyway. Actually no I'm not. I'm going to go straight to their animation and it says these movies show how distortions of the helical magnetic field of a cosmic jet in the center generates a strong electric field in the jet direction which is left the electric field boosts the energy of charged particles effectively creating a dense electric current along the jet right so what they're saying is that energy is moving and being shot upwards so here we go so they'll say one of these is gener generating the other. I say the electric field generates the magnetic field, which generates the actual electric field. So that basically shows uh, rotating magnetic fields. They're calling them distortions. Now, I know they're not distortions because I've explained this many times. OK, I've got to find the bit where they explain it. Um, however, the new study suggests a different mechanism that's tied to the disruption of the helical magnetic field generated by the supermassive black hole spinning at the center of active galaxies. So we knew these fields would become unstable. Okay. We knew, these, we knew these fields would become unstable, said lead author Paolo Alves, a research associate working with FUSA. But what exactly happens when the magnetic fields become distorted? And could this process explain how particles gain tremendous energies in these jets? That's what we wanted to find out in our study. To do so, the researchers simulated the motions of 550 billion particles, a miniature version of a cosmic jet, then scaled up the results to cosmic dimensions. From tangled field lines to high energy particles, the simulations showed that when the helical magnetic field is strongly distorted, the magnetic field lines become highly entangled and a large electrostatic field is produced from the jet. This arrangement of electric and magnetic fields can indeed efficiently accelerate electrons and protons to extreme energies, while high energy electrons radiate their energy away in the form of X-rays and gamma rays. Protons can escape the jet into space and reach the Earth's atmosphere as cosmic radiation. We see a large portion of the magnetic energy released in the process goes into high energy particles. So they're saying it, this is a rotating field as we're looking at it clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, so that accelerates things upwards. Now I don't know about anybody else, but I've seen that somewhere else by a very, very famous man. Let's go have a look at it together. So this on the right is Tesla's fluid diode. Now, he did this to show you how electricity moves because he was quite a clever bloke. And basically, if you create an Ouroboros uh, ring area, the water will spin into it and create motion upwards. So it gives its energy back to the main beam, which means, see the little red arrow at the top there? It means that it cannot come back down because the Ouroboros ring accelerates it. And the picture on the left there is me showing that smoke travel does exactly the same thing. And smoke uh, is radiation because it's uh, a flameless fire that's given out a pulsed wave, which is what Tesla's fluid diode is about because energy is a pulse. And so it creates an Ouroboros ring in the center and this gives energy back to the center. So instead of having a power of one, you now have a power of three. Tesla knew that. One to three. That's the first uh, double loop area on his Tesla fluid diode. And uh, it just keeps giving energy back. So it accelerates the ring, which of course is exactly what's happening in the photo. So what I'm showing here on screen is exactly the same thing. 
I've said that energy moves like this for four years now. It goes from vortex to Ouroboros field, ring field, and back to vortex. And then it repeats. And it does this when it meets an energy or matter barrier. Now I've explained how the Ouroboros field works in water with sand <laughs> and glitter and uh, soot particles and pieces of string rotating in the Ouroboros field to show that it does what it says. And here they are with their tangled magnetic field, still not understanding what it's doing. But I've been saying for four years exactly how it works. And I've drawn this procedure on the screen. It must be 30 times at least. So to go along with this, um, I showed the creation of spheres the other day using magnetism. Now I'm going to put up a picture that I did. Well, we'll see in a minute because I haven't even looked at it. I just knew where the picture was. So I went and got it. I haven't even looked at it yet. So uh, which shows the creation of spheres. And that's exactly what I'm showing on screen creating spheres in magnetism. So this is uh, where I explained how the Sun, um, a magnetic field, would form spheres and form planets. Now if you have a look at the top there, if we turn the whole picture sideways, um, you would see vortex, Ouroboros, vortex, Ouroboros. And uh, what I explained here is the Z-pinch planetary formation so you've got the top picture is your vortex to Ouroboros, uh, which is the same as the picture on the right. You have waves coming out uh, horizontally. And then picture number three, you have waves coming out vertically. And I show the direction of travel due to clockwise and counterclockwise rotations, which pull the matter from each wave into the center of each wave, which then forms spheres. And this is from the 31st of May 2015, when I showed... Our sphere is made. And now I've just showed it and it's exactly that principle of vortex to wave which is creating the spheres that you now see on screen. And so what you were seeing on screen, the left hand one there, you can see it waving and the right hand one's going very fast. But that is a wave creation of a sphere, which is vortex to Ouroboros field. And then it is rotated in and then pulled back into a vortex across the surface of the magnet. Thanks very much. Now you know how galaxies work. My name is Lee. I follow the Christ. And I'm showing you all the things he showed me four years ago. I hope you all have a excellent new year. And that uh, this brings you closer to the fact that God is real. And he is an energy being. And he has showed me how all energy works. And I've showed it for the last four years in everything. And now I've shown the creation of spheres in real time by a known force, observationally, and nobody else ever has in the history of science. They have said, uh, we can't prove it because planets are huge. That's gravity for you. Well, I've shown a force creating spheres and I even told how the sun would do it with planets. And it's exactly the same process because energy never changes. And that's why God never changes. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.